And the thing I notice about people, the ones that seem to be most unhappy are the ones that aren't giving, that aren't expressing in some way or other. So whether I'm expressing through teaching or I'm expressing through sharing some experiences or I'm expressing through cooking dinner or I'm expressing through raking leaves or I'm expressing through any other myriad of ways to express, you know, if we're allowing ourselves to be a vehicle through which that energy can come through and go out, creating beautiful flowers, um, then I'm at my happiest because the energy is flowing. And so it's, it's like this, my little person, but the energy comes in and then as it, it can flow out through your doing or it can flow out through your feeling, you know, any, or you can, you can uh, also just send love. You can just send love and blessings to people and that you're giving that energy out and that's the quality of energy you're giving out when, you, when you're expressing in that way. So the more that you express out and the more that flows in, the more you become a dynamic receptacle and vehicle for this energy to flow through you. And energy is never static. And anyone who's sitting around not doing anything, not expressing in any way, tend to be feeling very static. They're, they're not happy. They're not happy. We need to be in service. We need to be giving in some way to each other. Because we're, I think of it as we're in a symphony, and I'm here playing my little oboe or something, and somebody you're playing the piano and somebody else is playing the trombone, and we have to be playing this together. And if, we're, if somebody's missing, if the oboe is missing today, the symphony is not complete. So each one of us has something to put in to this music called the universe. And so what we want to do is continually recognize the giving and the receiving, the giving and the receiving that is happening. The more you give, the more you receive. Now, I'm talking in terms of expressing yourself. But the, the truth is also that whatever we give out, whether it's a compliment or love or appreciation or a gift, a physical gift or money, all of that goes out and it comes back in the same form. So we talk about tithing sometimes about giving 10% of your income or giving a certain portion of your time away for, for volunteering. Um, whatever you give is what comes back. If you're giving money, money comes back. If you're giving time, time comes back. So we're in, a, we're in this expression of dynamic energy. We're constantly in communion with the universe. We're constantly interacting with the universe. And another example would be like every cell of our body is constantly giving off enzymes and, and different things into the body, into the circulatory system, and being replenished. It's giving out, replenishing, giving out, replenishing. We can understand that process and cooperate with it, and we can be very open and appreciative of it, and our bodies will work beautifully. Or anytime we're resisting something in our life, resisting something in our life, we're blocking the flow of energy when we resist, then something will happen in our bodies to show us that we're resisting. So disease is not natural. Disease is unnatural. The body is naturally vibrant and healthy. But when we're resisting, then something shows in our body that says, oh, you're resisting energy. Okay, we want to look at that and go, I need to open up to a greater flow. The nature is flow. Nature is a flow of energy. And it's very much like the sunlight hitting the soil, warming the seed, the seed sprouts, the seed spreads out and expresses into roots and so forth and sends up a flower or a tree. And, and then that tree is giving out more seed and shade and whatever. And then, so that process is constantly continuing and moving. And it's natural. It's natural. There's no thought to the process. The thought happens naturally. Or we watch birds, and they build nests, and they have babies, and they feed the babies, and they fly off, and then they start all over again. So the, they don't think about how hard work this is, what this is really difficult and stressful. They just do it very naturally. So that's a rhythm. And understand the rhythm, and then we can understand ourselves and the rhythm that we need to have. And that's the purpose of communing with nature, as far as I'm concerned. What is my right rhythm? Am I violating it? Am I staying in rhythm? You know, am I going too fast? Am I pushing too hard? How can I stay in rhythm? Okay, so if you stop, the, if you stop that flow at any point, if you stop that flow, it's very much like creating a block in your body, and you'll notice your body changing or dis becoming diseased, 
in some way or other to illustrate that to you. So we cannot really stop the flow. We really can't because if we even resist something in life, we're, we're creating a partial stoppage. But the second we stop it completely, we're dead. Because the thing that keeps us animated and expressive is the energy that pours through the body. Okay, so we, in that energy, again, we are one with nature. We are one with the whole sea of universal energy. We are one. I am here, somebody else is here and here. And we're all connected through this sea of universal energy. The more sensitive you become to that, the more you can feel what's going on around you. So what we want to do is experience wealth and abundance. And the way we do that is open up, open up to the flow of energy, F open up. We want to learn to work with it, to flow with it, to not override it and to not overtax ourselves, but to flow with energy and, and be expressive beings in, in a rhythm that works. Does that make sense? Money's part of that. When we talk about circuit, law of circulation, money is part of that. Money is a certain symbol for value. I do a service, I receive some value. I do a service, I receive value. Okay, so that works for all of us. Um, and what we want to do is understand the rhythm that goes with that. The more we give out, the more that comes in. And a lot of people will think that the way to have money is to hoard it. Or to, this is my little savings account, and I, you know, I'm going to let it build. And, but it won't build that way, because the way to, to build that is to give it, and, and then more comes in. And we can build it that way. We're still putting it to work. We're putting it to work in a company or business or some kind of activity and allowing it to build. So hoarding is very much like stopping the energy flow in the body. It becomes suffocated and strangulated. So how, the, the key is here, how to keep it circulating, how to keep it circulating. Um, we want to learn how to give and then how to receive. What we want to do is always look at our intent. Again, we'll talk about intent constantly, but when we're giving out, is my intent to convince you of something? Is my intent to give unconditionally? Is my intent to make you believe a certain way? What, whatever that intent is, or if I, am I saving you? Am I seeing, I'm giving to your neediness, okay? And it, whatever that intent is, that's where our, our focus is. If I go to visit my parents or people because I think they need me there and because I'm obligated to do that, then I'm giving out of obligation, which is fear. Okay, and if I go because I want to spread joy, because I want to, you know, give my light to people, and I want to share all the goodness I have in my life, that's a whole different intent. So we want to look at our what we're giving and what we're receiving, and what is the intent in that. And I know people who will give a lot, but then they won't receive. So what they're doing is they're, they're expressing it a lot, but they won't receive. Then again, they're strangulating the energy coming into their lives. Does that make sense? And many people will say, oh, it's, I, giving is wonderful, but I'm not, nobody can give to me. Oh, no, I'm not going to let anyone give to me. You know, people like that, right? And then, uh, then what happens is their life feels there's a shortage in their life because they blocked the natural process of giving and receiving.